Listen, there, there's no doubt you're going to put pressure on the debt over the next uh, next couple of years. There's going to be more issuance coming to the bond market. You know, rates are going to move move higher. We think rates are moving higher anyway. But that being said, there's so much demand for assets. This is, I would argue, you are going to increase the debt. There is a number of assumptions around how dynamic scoring will create growth that you don't grow the debt that significantly. My sense is you will pull forward growth. You will create some capex that the debt burden won't be dramatically higher, but it, uh, at the margin, for sure, you're going to see more debt as a result of it. And then what about, and then what about if there is subsequently a, an infrastructure bill in the area of a trillion dollars? Doesn't th That has to get paid for somehow, and usually that gets paid for with debt. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, you're creating the same dynamic, and it's part of what the markets have become sensitive to. You know, we look at numbers. You take this year versus last year. The, the difference in terms of what the Fed is buying versus what they're not going to be next year and the Treasury, since you're already talking about a trillion difference into next year, and then if you bring on infrastructure, yeah, you're talking about more financing. And, uh, you know, that is going to pressure, and you've seen it already pressure, particularly the front end of the yield curve. But, but what about growth? We're going to get more revenue? I mean, that's the argument. I mean, Ronald yeah. Reagan, the deficit did go up, but that's because spending went up a lot mm -hmm. on defense and also on retirement benefits. However, tax revenue went up dramatically. It actually doubled sure. as a result of the tax cut. So, therefore, couldn't we get more revenue as well? And when we get more growth? Yeah, so there's a, there's a couple of things to talk about. First of all, CapEx is growing. CapEx was growing well before this, uh, this tax bill. So, we think you'll see a persistent growth of CapEx. Growth should be, uh, growth should be good again next year. One of the things that this will do with direct expensing and the ultimate sunsetting of direct expensing, you will pull forward growth. You will see, I mean, listen, you could have a number next year, we talk about nominal GDP, that could hit the four and a half to five number, wow. particularly if inflation trends higher. So, but you're going to pull forward growth. What does that mean for two years hence, three years so, hence? You know, could we be, could you see it come the other way? For sure. But, uh, but yeah, you will pull forward, so if, pull forward a bit of growth. If it's going to be viewed that that is sort of a, a temporary blip in growth, how does the Fed respond to that in terms of their, their rate hike cycle? Yeah, I mean, I think the Fed's laid out, and we're going to hear that today, that, you know, that we think they're going to go three times next year. There is an outside chance that they, uh, they move four times. Listen, one of the things that's really important, when the Fed is in a tightening cycle, it's different than an easing cycle. They tend to want to see the data. They tend to be behind the curve. You know, they want to make sure it's durable. They want to make sure the growth is kicking in. It'll be interesting to see today how much they assume you'll get in terms of stimulus, whether they'll take the dots up further than three hikes next year. So that's something we're going to keep an eye on. But I, listen, I think it's one thing that's important. When the Fed goes this way, i.e. tightening, it tends to be more deliberate than the other way where you want to anticipate and be faster. Yeah, Rick, and final question. Looking at your portfolio, looks like you think emerging markets are a better bet than the U.S. bond market. Fair to say? Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say one of the things that's going to happen, <clears throat> we think for the next couple of years, emerging market debt, where growth is actually, growth in the world is good, we actually think you'll see a compression of emerging market to developed market debt broadly. European rates are too high, Japanese rates are too high. Emerging market debt in a, in a number of places around the world is still attractive. We think that will continue to compress into 2018. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.